Hey, this is for the YouTube. This is for the YouTube. So y'all, what are we doing? We doing um what are we doing tonight? <laughs> Breaking the Gordian Knot is the name of this one from the Vishnu Warrior book, tournament guidebook that's coming out the, uh, later in the year. Um, actually, I think sometime next year. But shout out to Vishnu Warrior, and we are, we are going to have him on the stream soon. But tonight we anal we analysis we're analyzing a game, and um, the theme here is breaking the Gordian knot. So we're going to talk about exactly what that is in a minute, of course, and how you can do it in your own games, right? So let's check it out um here all right let's check it out so gordian knot first off what is it in fact in chess uh they also talk about that in the scandinavian too there's certain books that talk about the gordian knot but let me pull up what it says even from the book here uh here we go okay it says breaking the gordian knot right the gordian knot which actually by definition if you look it up on like like wikipedia or google you know it's literally like a knot and it's like very very difficult to to break open so of course hence the thumbnail when y'all see that for youtube the golden knot is a legend associated with alexander the great there used to be an extremely tangled knot that no one could untie whoever whoever could untie the knot would be deemed king alexander the great was unable to untie the knot but upon thinking about the problem further pulled out his sword and cut the knot in half noting it didn't matter how the knot was cut and basically in chess, it says, if all of your opponent's pieces prevent you from playing a certain move, but you still execute this move anyway, it could be dangerous for your opponent. Cutting the Gordian knot. Pretty nice. Breaking the Gordian knot is what we're looking at today. All right, cool. What's this game? Let's get into it. Of course, you guys are going to be interactive in the chat just like that. This is a, a game in 2000. Um, by I'm not, I forgot I didn't even check the fee days here, but I'm sure they were GMs here. But this is Evgen Edvins Ken Gis Edvins Ken Gis versus Manfred Heinrich. Like these are just some awesome names. But uh, here it is, guys. Check out this goes. Check, check, check out how this game goes. My earbuds produce Gordian knot. Wow. All right, here we go. Knight of three, move one. Very flexible move from for move one. Knight of three, the ready type systems, King's Indian attacks, all kind of stuff. F5, and we live. So now he already, I like, just let's go. When you see somebody play F5, you know, it's either going to be real good or it's going to be real bad. It's really like no in between here, right? You know, so black can get a lot of counterplay and have great games, or white's just going to crush them. There's really like no in between. That's why it's a popular opening. Sometimes, especially at the lower levels, just being a little bit unorthodox. I teach this to students a lot, not F5, but the principle of just being unorthodox is in this day and time. So after f5, there's g3. G3 with the intention of putting a bishop on g2. Pretty simple stuff. Knight of six and bishop g2, d6, and now d4. So this is honestly very easy stuff. We're gonna fly through a few of these moves. And in fact, in like maybe five or six moves, we're gonna start asking you in the chat because this is one of the quicker games that we've analyzed. I mean, this is only 23 moves here. This went crazy. So watch how this happens though. After d4, bishop g7, develop your pieces. And I told you, it's either gonna be real good or it's going to be real bad. Now, in fact, actually, we can start here. This is an interesting concept that happens here a lot that you can also do with uh, both colors, white or black. So it's white to move, chat. What do you do here? There was bishop g7. Yeah, yeah, bishop g7. White to move here. You got moves like castles, e3, c3, c4, b3, stuff like that. What do we do? You got c4 from Wix. C4. Sorry, I was reading a message. Okay. H4, C3, castles, E3. Um, all right. H4. I like H4. I'm a big fan of the H pump pushes. H4 and punch your board. Oh my goodness. Fan of Master Cleanser. Oh, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. All right. This is just just don't just don't mind him, guys. Just don't mind him. F5 is normally a crappy opening move. This is uh the Dutch, yes, correct. Bishop F4. Bishop F4, yeah, the Dutch. F5 is normally a crappy move opening. It, it depends, right? You know, believe it or not, um, there are GMs that actually play, and not all the time, but sometimes you'll see GMs will um will use the Dutch in a must-win situation. That's crazy. I was trying to pull up my chat. Alright, we good. Let's put it on my chat on my other device too. Okay, so after Bishop G7, here's the move, guys. Check it out. B4 right that's crazy this man played b4 this is something that you would see in reverse in fact sometimes as black you will see b5 happening to stop c4 if they don't play c4 
So when I saw B4, I was like, oh, wow, black actually does that same thing. Yeah, B4 looks like a wild move, doesn't it? But what it does is clamps down on C5 and it's preparing to put the bishop on B2. So now this is actually something you can use in your own games here because this is just out off the wall, outside the box for real. But if you think about it and backtrack here, every game is black. I always tell students this too. Usually at some point you do want to either open the C file or play C5. That's how you get more space, allowing the queen to get out. Half open C file, hence the queen's gambit, plays C4 and D4, knight C3 to open the half open file. It's easier to have space that way. So now you can't play C5, so you won't get as much space. So something to pay attention to. Now D6 from black. After D6, bishop B2, double finchetto setup here, very flexible. Never would black probably thought that this position was going to happen after knight f3 move one this is why the flexibility and being being um unpredictable is very nice to have this kind of repertoire but you got to be good at it castles and c4 from um from king is here after c4 queen e8 this is all dutch life stuff like literally dutch leningrad stuff uh, dutch put the bishop on g7 you play e5 i remember these from playing classical dutch or at least studying it from simon williams knight to c6 knight d7 a5 c5 e5 and g5 h6 like you're trying to play a reverse grand prix for all you grand prix players out there with white i actually was for a long time myself but this is the reverse grand prix so after queen e8 there's castles right and now this is about to get spicy here c6 okay cool white to move guys very harmonious very easy position to play here very easy to position to play what do you do now we got a little bit of space as white we like to get the e4 push in but we're not fully developed yet either like what do you do House 68, thanks for the follow. Silent Rookie 1, Phantom Master Clenger. Queen C3 from La Toro. La Toro, yeah. D5, we got D5 and we have C5. What was that? Uh, I'm tripping. D5 and C5, okay. There we go. A4, I like A4. Look at that. Queen B3, Knight D2. Which Knight to D2? C Sean. Knight C3 from Crystal EXC. You have two knights that can go to d2. You have the f knight and you have the b knight. We have a4, d5, queen b3, knight to c3. d5, knight c3 from Alex Jordan. Knight b d2 from house 67. Bishop d2. Oh, he meant b d2. b knight d2. <laughs> I've never seen it out of order like that, Sean. That's like so foreign to me. I'm always, you know, for... 22 years of chess i've been playing right um i have never seen it that way and it's just like wow that's not how you write it knight b to d2 so all right it's actually this is correct sean and then everyone in the chat is knight b to d2 develop your pieces develop your pieces knight b to d2 Get the last piece off the back rank. Or at least not the last one. I mean, you got the queen too as well. But we have flexibility. White's doing fine. This is why you have to be careful in the Dutch. Know what you're doing. If you're playing this from the black side, flip the board here. And you play this from the black side and you play move one F5, you need to know what you're doing. Like straight up. Or you're going to get in a lot of trouble very, very quickly. Let's flip the board here and see what white does or black. After knight b to d2, e5, which is the thematic break here. But it also looks like it hangs upon immediately because after d takes e5, if pawn takes right back, we can take with the knight or the bishop. But black has an in-between move or uh, addition jug in a way. Uh, intermezzo is knight to g4. Knight to g4 is hitting e5. Hitting e5, but he could also take on d6, but then that allows bishop takes b2. So white to move, folks. All right, come on, chat. What do we do? Time to go to work. Macron, what's up? What's up, bro? Why is it in and out of K? Because there is a king, too, as well. Ah, uh, yes, king. Yes, forget it. Yeah, this king is K, yes. Knight g4. What do you do? Feels like e5 is annoying, right? It feels like we have some issues here. I mean, it is kind of annoying. And we still haven't finished development yet. I mean, we got to do something. The more you know we can't see. That's right, big fella. Come on. Light to move, chat. Lots of moves here. This is a surprising move, in fact. Let me turn the engine on. Let me see what the engine likes. I just want to know. Dang. Yeah, he played. I mean, this guy is strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He played engine move number one. Well, now it's number two. Now it's number three. But it's still up there. It's still up there. 
Uh, we got silent rookie one. Yo, Kenzie just got to work. Hope you have an amazing stream. Keep grinding, going, and I uh, you just popping in and say what's up. Thanks, Sage, bro. I appreciate you, man. Hey, um, hope you had a good one at work today, man. Get some rest and uh, watch. Make sure you're watching the tubester to get uh, the drop on this video. We got H3, H4, E4, E4. Mike reads with the prime, bro. Let's go. Come on, Mike reads with the prime because it's time. What do you mean right now? Knight to g4. After knight g4, hitting e5, hitting e5 four different times. Ridiculous. You're not getting this pawn back. You're not. Hey, come real close to the camera. Thank you. You're not getting this pawn back. Okay. So you need to get over it and do something else. So the move here, in fact, is c5. C5 and we live. Nice job, Dante. Nice job. C5 and we live, big fella. Sheesh. Wow. Testing name ignore with a five piece. Dang, bro, is that your first time gifting too, man? Is that your first five here? Oh, you get it too already. So that's seven total. Thanks, man. Appreciate that five. Five piece from test name. Ignore. Yeah, it's C5 for real, bro. Good job, Dante. Good job. Now, after C5, there was D5, though. And now, wait a second. Okay, this starting to look a little different. Think about this. Now, the Gordian knot, right? Remember, we break in that Gordian knot. And, like, if you think about a Gordian knot, or you can even Google it. I recommend actually Googling Gordian knot right now. There's so many things that come up about these complicated things, knots, ties, puzzles, things like that, that uh, go with the Gordian knot. So here, look about, think about this. Look at, look at this. I mean, you're not breaking this down, bro. Like you, 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 you gonna need some some very heavy artillery to break down this pawn chain, right? So it's white to move. It's white to move in this position. What do you do, guys? What do you do? Extreme fourteen oh two. Thanks for the follow. I can tie all the knots. By the way, I am a rock climber. Oh, okay, Dante. Okay, but can you can you do this one though? Can you can you do this one, Dante? That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking you, fella. Queen to c three. I think you mean queen b three. Outdoor, indoor, and that's fine. And the knot you're talking about is gnarly, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Rock climbing is so fun. Queen B3 from play with John. With our John. I saw one more time. Uh, queen B3. Okay, we got some Queen B3 action in there. Knight G5 from Phantom Master Clendrick. Knight G5. Let's look at that. Okay, Knight G5. Rook B1 from Mike. Big Mike Reed says Rook B1. Okay, let me see what the engine says. Top three moves are. Okay, this one, that one, and that one. Queen B3 from Must Stasholia. A4 from Stu. Okay, all right. So the move from the game was Queen B3. Queen B3 did show up, but then it disappeared after for after you let the, the engine think. And then it goes A4, E3, and Bishop D4. Bro, what? Yo, get your mans, right? You know, you always want to question the engine when you're doing engine work or engine analysis. You always ask yourself and you think about it like, no, I'm not doing that. Like, hey, bro, you can take that one back. Appreciate you, though. Thank you, but you can take that one back. Bishop d4, I'm not doing. But I will play a4 or queen to b3, though. Those are, are definitely real moves. So queen to b3 actually is a move from the game. Queen b3, king h8, prophylactic, which in fact... That's coming up, I think, our next video or the video after that. It's going to be prophylaxis. But King H8 is a prophylactic move, getting out, preventing anything from happening before it happens. Right. So after King H8, okay, cool, guys. We got this big knot to deal with. There's still stuff we got to do. We are not fully optimized or ready to set up yet. We're not ready. So it's why to move once again, chat. What's the next move? Queen C3 from Dante gets out of the pen right 100%, Lotta. 100%. We in here. That's right, Stu. We in here, bro. Why to move, yo? Where are we going, chat? It's an interesting idea. People learning, or should they try and play like an engine? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on your level, honestly, Doctor Harmon. How stronger you get, maybe the more. But before the end, no. Yeah, you don't even understand why they're doing stuff, right? So that would be a a, a fatal error. A four, B five. King H eight gets out of ninety four, ninety six, right? Well, yes, correct. But it also just steps out of this line. Period. Because this this is just annoying. Well, now this pawn basically isn't even here, but it really is. But it can't help do anything because the king's here. You you, you never want to stay in an x-ray. That's what I tell the students all the time. If I put this rook on e1 and go here like this, you should automatically feel this pressure. You should automatically, I don't care how many pieces I have in between here, you should get this queen off of this ASAP. 
And if you fail to do so and you lose, it's probably because of something that happened to do with this or vice versa with the king, the king and, and the x-ray. So 100% not a move, a face blockage, 100% natural, premium Cambodian. Get the man off the board. Thank you for the follow, Captain Sparrow. Appreciate you, my guy. B5, Rook A to D1. And that is not it. Knight G5 is not it. In fact, here it is, chat. Here it is after King H8. The man went. Here it is. Are you ready? He went. Rook A to E1. It's nothing. I just I hide you up for nothing. Rook A to E1, bro. It's Rook A to E1. This is not even breaking the Gordian knot yet. Okay? It's not that time yet. Rook A to E1. And now everything's optimized, or at least we have all of our pieces on the best squares. I always tell students a lot of times when you have the best attacks are prepared, or at least the best players, when they do attack, they are prepared. So think about that. They're prepared. You said, what about the Rook on F1? Yeah, I mean, maybe it'll later, may, later on it might be doing something. Later on. But if you look at overall development, white's better than black. And, I mean, you have this problem here. Everything's on a back rank besides one piece. I mean, maybe... Okay, uh, technically, right, everything's not on the back rank because this bishop's on the seventh, but basically everything's on the back rank. And, and white, I mean, different. Maybe black rank still, but it mobilized. Knight g5's jumping. Maybe the knight can use the b3 square. This bishop's pretty nice. My queen's active. I'm, I got the files. I can move this knight, play f3 and e4. Maybe play f4. Maybe play h3, right? This rook can help with the f4 push later on. So it's it's a, a way to use rook a to e1. But in this position, um, let's say Rook F to E1 too, I think has some annoyance with uh, just the F2 pawn. But you either one works, to be honest. Like, there's no real big difference here. Like, there's literally, even turning on the engine here, there's like a 0.3 or 4 difference. Like, it's not a lot. It's not a lot at all. But Rook A to E1 was the choice that he chose. Now, he says, okay, you know what, Luke? It's time to take my pawn back. I'm going to snap those. Okay. Now, what do we do, Chad? Do we take it or not? What do we do, chat? Are we taking this, or do you have another move instead of taking it? Never would have thought of that. Never would have thought to move the A rook, and you do want to move the A rook because you want to get all your pieces in the game. That's usually uh, that's all it's about. Rook on half one isn't so so distancing. That's right. Knight g five, queen c three, take it and run like you stole it. Says Doctor Horn. I mean, it, you're not getting pretty far. He did capture it, and you're not getting pretty far, bro. He just said, "Give me those." Now, right here, guys, okay, we, let's take a look at this position. This is a very critical moment. And, in fact, the whole title of this video today is about this position right here. Is the Gordian knot. This is very, very big, very, very strong. We got to break this up eventually by means of maybe G4, B5, or attacking at the bases like this, uh, A4, A6. And you can't attack over here and not a move. It don't work. Big fellas, try a new one. Doesn't work. A4, A5, A6 could possibly work. And just slowly chisel down at this bond structure. That's usually how you would do it. And maybe even G4, but even if you get G4 in and take this, the problem with playing G4 is if I take it, I, I mean, then what? And now you still got to deal with these two. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, in fact. Now, breaking the Gordian knot, in fact, let's go back to what it says in the text, right, about the Gordian knot. I'm going to read it to you again. If you're just getting here, good. Now you can read it or listen to it. Breaking the Gordian knot. The Gordian knot is a legend associated with Alexander the Great. There used to be an extremely tangled knot that no one could untie. Whoever could untie the knot would be deemed king. Alexander the Great was unable to untie the knot, but upon thinking about the problem further, pulled out his sword and just cut the knot in half, noting it didn't matter how the knot was cut. In chess, if all of your, if all of your opponent's pieces prevent you from playing a certain move, this should help you, but you, uh, but you still execute this move anyways, it can be very, very dangerous to them. So hopefully that helps you find this move here. It is white to move. We about to break this knot down, my guy. What do you do? B5, we got F4, we have E4. Thanks for the follow emergency exit. We got E4, we got knight F3. Can't stand G5, yeah. E4 from Turkey Gamer. Sounds like what happens when I try to untie my shoes without putting the light on. My goodness, bro. Oh my goodness. Somebody get their dad. That was great. That was funny. I'm not even gonna lie, that was funny. Alright, e4, 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 knight b1. Alright, here it is. Here it is. In fact, e4 for the score. That's right, Dante. E4 for the score, big fella. It works. That's right. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. This is this move works. This move works right now. Look at this move. I'm just, it looks like, yo, why would I play e4? We would you wouldn't even consider e4. You wouldn't even consider it. It's attacked twice. 
And they're like, yeah, I got it on lock. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, ain't nothing getting through here, my guy. And then they do it anyway. And then, you know, it's that awkward presence, that awkward stare, that awkward feeling that's just there in the room that you both know that I just did what you thought I couldn't do. And it's the very, very scary situation for black here now. After E4, um, now let's see what happens. Well, uh, in fact, in the game, there was bishop takes B2. But we're not going to do that. We're going to look at the other lines to see what happens. F takes E4, obvious. Okay, chat. F takes E4, what do you do? If he takes E4, we, uh, I see Turkey Gamer says knight takes E4 and rook takes E4. Well, you are 100% correct. And Lada says F3. That would be wrong here. You want to stay aggressive. Knight takes E4. So there's a lot of stuff going on. What about takes? Bishop takes, queen takes. Okay, this is a family channel. Let's just get this off the screen right now. There could be kids watching this right now. This is absolutely disgusting. GG, start a new one. Whoo, sheesh. So knight takes e4. After knight takes, d takes e4, rook takes. Okay, give me everything. Well, knight d7, hold up, hold up. We ain't done yet. Then you hit him with f4. Bishop's looking crazy, slicing the board. I mean, what are you doing with your life here? These moves, like, uh, nothing you can do, can't move anything. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. So e4, um, after e4, pawn takes, knight takes. I mean, what else do you actually do here? What else if, I mean, if you're not going to take and you're not going to take, you have to make a move. What are you going to do? Okay, how about knight d7? Maybe try to develop. Just say, all right, cool. Sidestep it. Don't even think about it. Knight d6, hitting the queen. Then rook takes e5 and f4. My goodness, tactics for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. Rook takes, hitting splitting and gg appreciate you my guy get the man off the board what about bishop f5 bishop f5 okay you know th this is getting out of hand you can't even take this you can't even take this bro my goodness so f takes e4 is not a move my guy do not take on e4 right okay well how about take the other way right maybe it's different maybe is different okay well knight takes e4 it literally looks exactly the same i don't see any difference i still have rook takes if bishop takes i still have queen takes discovery on the queen knight d7 i still have knight of six and now you can't even move this bishop out bishop e6 taking with check that's a wrap e4 broke the gordian knot down like it was nothing and after e4 here and this is how the game finished bishop takes b2 because he didn't know what else to do like queen takes b2 King g8, right? Now he's like, okay, well, at least I don't have to worry about knight f6 because I'm not going to take it. In fact, grandmasters say that you should keep the tension. And by keep the tension, that means that don't trade or I tell some students to take as a mistake, which means if you capture, does it better for you or is it better for them? So always, always think about that before you actually do a capture. E takes d5, though, does help us because it opens the file with a smile here. d6 is going to be nasty. I mean, peace is still looking gross. Queen f7, knight c4, very strong, hitting knight d6, and knight e5 as well. Queen g7, and okay, chat, right? Yeah, we went in, but you got to finish this off. So what do you do here? What do you do, chat? In fact, you know, many people in the chat could still lose this game. Yes, we're not even up a piece. It's plus seven right now, okay? It's plus seven. Seven points. You're up two pieces and a pawn right now is what it says but if you look at the board we're not down no like we're not up any pieces right we're not up anything three four five right and then three three four five and then how what's the pawn count three six seven right so okay we may be at one or two pawns here but it's saying it's plus seven right now you know your position bad so 95 i see 95 there what else we got what else we got here y'all i like the 95 move in fact not really a fond of trading d6 pawn too strong okay you could play d6 d6 could be a move that's another possibility e takes c6 i like that one too grabs for more material in fact you guys are all saying good moves which shows you how good of a position this is ricky five i mean it could be 97 might be a problem though 97 is problematic ricky five would be nice if we could just double without having 97 hit us 97 is kind of annoying um, but here's what happened. In fact, queen takes g7 was with check of one pawn. Thanks. To, thank you. Bishop queen takes uh, king takes g7. And then, all right, guys, finish this off once again. A lot of y'all could lose this from right here. So let's not lose this. Let's finish this off correctly. What do we do? I would just take the queen and double the rook, says Wix. Well, the queen was captured now, and you got to keep the initiative up.
as much as possible. In fact, I would have went Rookie 7 too, chat. I'm with you. I'm chat, I'm with y'all. I would have played Rookie 7, followed by Knight D6. But in fact, he reversed the move order, which is another method I teach. And, and it's something that's there. Like, if, if I wanted to play Rookie 7, then Knight D6, what if I go Knight D6 first, then Rookie 7? That's reversing the move order. So he played Knight D6 with the intention of obviously Rookie 7 steal. But I liked Rookie 7 just in case your opponent does go Rook F7 and you can fork them. Okay, didn't work though. He took on c6, take back. All right, guys, do we take on c6? Does it take c6 or no? Does it take c6 or no, chat? Ricky seven again. We got Ricky seven, Ricky seven. No, no, we got no offer, no offer that. We got a no, 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 no. Okay, well, I would I would probably check first too. I'm not even gonna lie. I would play rookie seven and then I would take on c6. And if you want king f6, I would take on h7. Right. But but what happened here, what happened here was uh waste of time taking. Um no, it's not. In fact, in order and you know, clap it up for you, chat. You know what? Clap it up. Clap it up, pat yourself on the back, you know what I'm saying? Fist pump it, flex real hard, whatever you got to do right now. Well, rookie seven, we would all play this. And this is the move from the engine. Number one. Well, again, he just played the second move, which is Bishop takes C6. Fine. Totally works, which shows you how good this position is. But rookie seven, I mean, just seems more natural. I can double the rooks very quickly. I can always take this pawn, right? But after Bishop takes C6, there was rook B8. Thank you, Paul. That Absolutely. Yeah, flex real hard, chat. That's, that's right. Y'all did that thing. Y'all did that. Bishop takes rook B8 and then A3. And after A3... The game was over. This is it. They this was it. So apparently Black just resigned right here. Noticing first off, what can I do? Enigma, thanks for the 18 months, bro. That's crazy. And that's a prime too. Pre appreciate the prime because it's time. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much. Now now look at this position. He resigned right here, but I mean, like, look at it. Where does the knight go? Knight C7, that's probably your best move. And then the rook goes where? Okay. Where does the rook go? Bishop does nothing, you know, like Rook does nothing. This is, I mean, beyond misery. You can't even play here. Rook E7, like, bro, you don't have any moves. You don't have any moves, bro, right? This is over. Like, that is crazy. And the crucial point here, again, thanks for the follow, IHT, is um the Gordian knot here. So when you see games, and the next time you start looking at your chess games, and you start seeing these structures like this, not that you can or you should immediately do it, but try to set up, how can I break down the Gordian knot here or this big pawn, pawn structure that you'll see in what kind of openings? Let's think about that. Scandinavians, right? Usually the pawn's gone off of d5, but a Scandi could be similar to this. Usually both of these are gone or not there. Usually in a Scandi, it's not both. This one's there on f7, but Scandi is one. Also, you have a Carol Khan. It could be another one. Sometimes reverse London system type setups could be something like this, where you have to try to look and see if you can get this Gordian knot off after takes. It was e4. Miss. Thanks for follow e4. Uh, that's right. Jim can do what's up. Ed Wid, my guy, bro. How are you feeling? Why did he take on d5 and not f5? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, I, I think because the bishop line is stronger here. After taking this way, yeah, I could take this way, but my bishop's. They call this biting on granite. If, if you ever read chess books and they talk about when a bishop is bad, they say it's biting on granite. That's kind of crazy how they actually said that, but that's kind of crazy, right? So, uh, how to solve the problem. Is it going out about getting rid of assumptions on how to solve the problem, basically? Yeah, I guess trying to solve the problem, basically. Um, absolutely solving the problem, but solving it, I guess, in the quickest way. Or also in chess terms here, like it says from our book, tournament guidebook at the end, right? The chess term here was in chess. If all of your opponent's pieces, so think about this, right? And this right here, check this out. Um, if all of your opponent's pieces right here, sorry, back here. These these pieces, not all of them, but basically these two are stopping you from playing a critical move E4 to open up the game where the X-ray is on the queen, devastating, basically ending the game. If you can get this open, I mean, it's such a strong move, but they're, they're stopping you. And what it says is in chess, if all of your opponent's pieces are preventing you from playing a certain move, but you, but you still execute this move anyways. It can be very dangerous for them. So now you can add this to your arsenal as something to, you know what? I I can't 
quotation marks. Maybe I can't, or it may look like I can't. You have to change your vocabulary. Maybe it looks like I can't, but what if I do it anyway? Shout out to my students actually watching. We understand, and some of them know, we went over the anyway mindset, which is a, a gym into the Jedi GM factory where we teach, basically, uh, it comes down to sometimes you have to do stuff anyway. What happens if I do this X, this move, blank, whatever, anyway, what is actually going to happen? And if you calculate it, sometimes you, 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 you surprise yourself and you might notice like, oh, it actually does work because X, Y, Z calculation is king. And that's it. Right. Gordian not E4. Very strong. Boom. And that was it. That was a wrap. I mean, a man went to town after that. Like, sheesh. You know, the Sam Shank question. What if I do it anyway? Right. If I do it anyway, you know, just, just do it anyway. And see, if it works, it works. If it don't, then, of course, cool. You can move on to other things, but at least you didn't miss anything. And that's, guys, is how you break in that Gordian knot. Make sure y'all are subscribing, of course, to the YouTube channel here. And, um, and uh, appreciate y'all, man. I'm going to see y'all in the next video.